Hey guys, it's Janine Audrey and welcome to my channel. If you recently decluttered your closet and you don't know what to do with a pile of clothes that's just sitting in the corner of your room, well, you're in luck because in this video, I'm going to be showing you the easiest and fastest way to sell your clothes online. Also, disclaimer, this isn't a tutorial on how to start your own online business. This isn't like an online thrift store kind of thing, but the instructions in this video can be applied to that. But the point of this video is just as simple as showing you how to sell your peel of clothes. That's it. So now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So first and foremost, you obviously have to choose the online platform that you want to work with. There's lots of options. There's Instagram, Facebook Marketplace, Twitter. But personally, I like to use Carousel because it's so easy to use, especially for beginners. If you don't know what Carousel is, it's basically like a Southeast Asian version of Poshmark and Depop, if you're familiar with that. Basically just a platform where you could sell all kinds of things really. Clothes, furniture, books, um, every other object really. Except legal ones, duh. And yeah, for me, Carousel is just like the easiest and most efficient platform to work with when you're selling pre-loved clothes. You can use Instagram but for me i think it's just harder to sell things on there because you need like followers for that and if you don't have a big following in your personal account to begin with you're gonna have to promote it and stuff and yeah i think instagram is more of an online thrift store kind of platform and not for like pre-loved clothes well technically a store for pre-loved clothes kind of is like a thrift store but like the point of this video is how to sell your clothes fast okay so yeah, I, you could use Instagram if you like, but personally, it's just harder to sell things on there. Facebook Marketplace, also a good platform, but I'm just not as used to Facebook Marketplace as I am with Carousel because I don't know, for some reason, I'm still kind of confused with how Facebook Marketplace works. I mean, it's basically the same thing, but it's just harder to navigate for some reason. Or maybe it's just me. And for Twitter, um, I don't really see a lot of people selling clothes on there. I see a lot of like K-pop merch and stuff, but I haven't really seen any people selling clothes. So yeah, Carousel is the best app. It's like my favorite app ever. Like it's honestly literally my favorite app because I buy everything on there and also I sell all of my stuff there. It's just so easy to use. Also, this is not sponsored at all i have like a hundred subscribers so okay so next step is taking your photos photos are very very important when you're selling your clothes because it's the first thing that buyers see and it's what makes them want to buy your stuff it's kind of the same logic as when you're choosing a thumbnail for a youtube video you want to have a good thumbnail for watchers to want to watch your video and it's the same for selling your clothes you want a good photo for buyers to want to want to buy your for buyers to want to buy your stuff so these are what I consider when I'm taking my photos. First of all, lighting and background. Very important, okay? You really need good lighting in order to have a good photo. And obviously the best option for lighting would have to be natural lighting. But if you don't have natural lighting in your room or any place in your house, you could always use artificial lighting. So you could use lamps and stuff and the background. I like to use a plain background for my photos to make it look neater. So I use my bed for my photos because I have a white blanket and that would be really good for like flat lays. But if my items are too big for my bed, I would actually just use the floor. But obviously, I make sure that my floor is clean. If you don't want to do flat lays, you could always take a photo of your items hanging. Or you could use a mannequin if you have a mannequin. Okay, and then when-worn photos. When-worn photos are very important. In my listings, I always add a when-worn photo except when the item doesn't fit me. You're gonna want to add when more photos because buyers are always gonna ask for a when more photo, like always. But if you don't want to add your when more photo in your listing, you could just save it in your phone. And if a buyer asks for a when more photo, you could just send that. For when more photos, I would usually do a mirror selfie because it's just the easiest way to take a when more photo. And also, you're gonna want to take pictures of like different angles of it when more. And lastly, take pictures of everything. Take pictures of the front, take pictures of the back, take pictures of flaws, if there are holes or stains or anything like that. Um, take a picture of the tag, always, if it's branded. Take a picture of the tag. 
Okay, so now that you have your photos, it's time to post your listings. The first thing that you're gonna work on is the title. Be as descriptive as possible for a title, but not as descriptive for a description. For the title, you're gonna want to add the color, the brand, um, the fabric, if it's like knitted or satin or anything, all the important stuff. Make your title searchable. Add words that people tend to look for when they're looking for an item. For example, um, if someone is looking for a graphic shirt and you have a graphic shirt, uh, include that in your title. Okay, I worded that so badly and excuse me for my appearance, but what I was trying to say was to use words that are commonly used to describe certain clothing. So in that example, if you had a graphic shirt, you wouldn't say something like printed shirt. You would say graphic shirt because that's what people commonly search for when they want a graphic shirt, if that makes sense. If it fits like a specific aesthetic, you could also add that. For example, Y2K. I see a lot of Y2K stuff on Carousel and the titles, they always have Y2K. Next is the price. For the price, I would usually make my prices higher than the price that I'm actually selling it for. If I'm selling my item for 300 pesos, I would post it as 350 pesos because there would be people that would ask for the last price or people that would make offers that are lower than your actual price. So you're gonna want to consider that, but don't make it so overpriced, it doesn't match the worth of the item anymore. Another important part besides the title is your description. In your description, again, you want to be as descriptive as possible. Include the size, of course, um, and not just like small and medium. You're gonna want to add the dimensions. So take a tape measure, measure the length, the width, uh, the waistline if it's like a bottom. Measure your item. Buyers are always gonna ask for dimensions. You could also add the condition of your item, so that's based on how well used your item looks. So if it has like some flaws here and there, you could make it 8 out of 10, something like that. If there's flaws, of course, you always have to add the flaws. You don't want to scam your buyers. And the following are optional for when you're making your description. First, um, original price of the item. So of course it's second hand and you would be selling it lower than the original price unless if it's actually like brand new. So for example, your original price is 1000 pesos and you're selling it for 800 pesos. You could say in your description like originally bought for 1000 pesos so that your buyers know the worth of your item. And lastly, you could also add other brands as tags. Personally, I don't do this because I get annoyed when I <laughs> When I'm searching for a specific brand and something pops up and I look at it and it's not actually the brand, you know? So tags are basically used so that your items would be seen more by people on the app. For example, like at the end of your description, you would add like different brands like H&M, Forever 21, Brandy Melville, Princess Polly, blah, 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 blah. So the people who would search up those brands would see your item. But then again, I don't do this because it's annoying for me personally. But for example, if my item was inspired by a specific brand, I would actually add that. For example, uh, Brandy Melville inspired. Okay, next step is chatting with your buyer. My first rule, always be nice. Because first of all, why would you not want to be nice to a complete stranger? Second, being nice would make your buyer want to buy your item more. And also, being nice would give you good reviews. Now, if your buyer made the decision that they want to buy your item, you're going to want to ask for their name, their address, and their contact number because that's what you're going to use for shipping. Also, for lowballers, I know they're annoying as hell and you would just want to ignore them. But you Usually I would still engage with them because I've had buyers that initially lowballed me but when I gave my actual last price, they ended up still buying it. And lastly, shipping. Shipping could be intimidating at first but it's actually very easy once you know what courier to use. There's a lot of options for shipping but I personally use Fast Track because it's the cheapest and also the most reliable for me. You could also use GoGo Express but I haven't had the best experiences with them. Yeah, I'm just not gonna expound on that because I'm not trying to catch a lawsuit here. But yeah, GoGo Express is actually also good if you get good writers because it has an app and it's easier to navigate. Fast Track, on the other hand, has a website. I'm not sure if they have an app. I haven't really checked, but I always use the website. There's also Flash Express. They also have an app and actually, um, they're a lot cheaper sometimes like i used it one time and the initial price for shipping was 160 pesos because it was provincial but when they came to my door it became like 
37 pesos, 38 pesos, because they do like discounts and stuff. But I also heard on like Twitter, I've read that some sellers would lose their parcels. So yeah, I don't really use it a lot because I don't want to risk that kind of thing. I'm not trying to catch a lawsuit here. There's also JNT and JRS. Um, I'm pretty sure JNT is also cheap, especially if you're shipping provincially. But I just don't know how to use JNT and JRS because for some reason they don't do door to door pickups to my area. And of course, if your buyer is just nearby or in the same city as you, you could always use Lala Move or Grab. Also, if you're using Fast Track or GoGo Express and you know that you're gonna sell more stuff in the future, you could also ask the rider for more plastic and more of the weighables so that in the future you could prepare beforehand. And yeah, for packaging, I would usually just use a Ziploc or like a sheen ziplock or something and yeah that's it that's all i have for you guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you'll be able to sell your clothes fast um i feel like i've been doing this for like two or three years i think so uh, i have credentials for making this video it's actually really easy and really basic um most of these stuff are self-explanatory but yeah i hope that my tips help you sell your clothes faster thanks so much for watching if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe follow me on my instagram if you feel like it and yeah bye